Hi everyone, welcome back. Mariners are either cooking something big or they are giving up on 2024. I don't like it. After the series lost to the Astros, which was super aggravating, they're one game back of first and with no sign of really coming back. So we'll talk about it. Let's get into it. This time he's able to straighten it out. Keep it set for me. Hey, how about Victor Robles? Out to left field. High drive left field. It's Stover. Out of the depths. Comes up huge. Welcome back to Touching Bases Podcast. Thank you all that have joined us on this new channel. I really appreciate it. We have hit a thousand subscribers and I think that is something beautiful and, and awesome and I really appreciate it because this does take a lot of work, although I am enjoying it. It's nice to know that you guys are actually taking it in and joining the ride and being here from the very beginning. If you're new here, subscribe and join us on this long road and it doesn't cost you a thing. If you're a baseball fan, you never have too much content these days. Like the video at the end if I earned it. If not, leave a comment why it happened. And Enough of that. Ty France has officially been cut from the Mariners roster as they irrevocably, say that slowly, placed him on the waivers for any team to pick him up. If he isn't picked up by another team, he'll be optioned to AAA. Ty does have an option to decline that and be released as a free agent if he wishes because he does have time in the MLB to decline and not be optioned down to AAA. I'm not sure why he would do that because then he basically has to try his luck in the second half of the season with a negative war. So although he's been recorded not only the worst defensive first baseman in the league right now, but also the one of the worst hitting first baseman in the league right now. I like Ty France. Has he been great? No. Has he been good? Still? Eh. No, not really. But has he been the stronger bat on the team? I Sadly, yes. Now, that doesn't really say much considering the Mariners average is the worst in baseball at a 218 and Ty is batting a 223 with eight home runs, which isn't a lot for first baseman and 31 RBIs and 28 runs scored over 88 games. Now, someone who's going to be really slow on the base pass should probably be hitting more home runs than eight, especially at the major league level at the starting position. Position, and he is already halfway done with the season. But his defensive glove is also kind of spotty. With four errors this season and a negative 11.3 defensive F4, I had faith he could turn this around, but I didn't expect him to be let go. Especially when there's bigger dead weight pieces on the Mariners, such as Mitch Hanniger, who we just traded for, who still has, I believe, two more years on his contract, but it's running us around 17 million versus Ty France being around around two or five million. So it's it's an odd choice for, for for the Mariners to be dropping him versus some of the bigger contracts that are doing worse. But what does this mean? Either the Mariners are deep with a deal for a first baseman like Vlad Guerrero Jr., which is highly unlikely given the Blue Jays press saying they aren't selling, but maybe. Or Christian Walker, which Arizona may be willing to give us because he is a rental and Mariners and D-backs are prior trade partners. It worked out pretty well for Arizona the last go around. And so, I mean, maybe they'll like want to buy in and, and hand him over to us. Lastly, and maybe the most likely, the Giants with Lamont Wade Jr. That may be the most reasonable at this point. Hear me out. Oh, hey, I got my screen up. Where were we? Tyler Locklear is the only other primary first baseman in our system that they've acknowledged as far as coming up to replace Ty. We do have Vossler who's been doing really good. He is a veteran that's proven himself, whether or not that he's just really good in AAA and you know not so good at the major league level, which is ironically a lot of the Mariners players right now. But Locklear, I mean, down AAA is all fine and dandy with a 260 batting average. And I know there's other stats besides batting average, but trying to look at people that get on base and get the most hits for provincial runs and, and getting runs in. Locklear in the bigs is batting a 200 with a walk rate of only 3% at the time, striking out 37.5%. So I don't know if I want someone near 40% of the time striking out. I guess defensively he is better than France from what we can see, but I don't know if this is really an upgrade in any way, shape, or form if this is the only move the Mariners are gonna go with. Unless the Mariners are cutting budget for next season, honestly, a first base bat may be what they're going for. And personally, I mean, the Giants, they have plenty of batters. They have a couple players that can perform at first base already. And they are already a trade piece in the 
off season with Robbie Ray for Hanager, which I mean, there's a couple other players, but hear me out. They fleeced us and maybe they can get some more prospects by giving up Lamont Wade Jr. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with the first baseman of the San Francisco Giants, he is batting at 305 and only striking at 22.4% of the time, which is 2% less than the league average, which is nice. It's probably about 30% less than our whole team. And he's also doing this in the second hardest stadium to hit besides T-Mobile Park, who is number one. So park factors included, I'd expect a 5% bump, which would put him at 27.4% of striking out. And that's being extreme and, you know, that he would just fall apart coming to Seattle, but that's still better than more than half the team. This season, he has 146 WRC+, plus, which would make him the highest on the team. And he's not only a first baseman, but he can also play the outfield. This opens the door for him and Luke Rayleigh to platoon the corner outfield and play first. With Victor Robles being a favorite outfielder as it stands, hitting 390 with the Mariners, an OPS plus of 206, which, I mean, who else is that high in OPS plus? Well, I can tell you, it's Shohei Otani. Chill out, relax. I'm not saying he's as good as Shohei. He's only played in 25 games, but that that's the caliber of offense he's contributing to the Mariners so far. So it, it still is factual. As of yesterday though, Julio made a jumping attempt at the wall and exited the game with an injury to his foot or ankle. He got an MRI and it came back negative. So he might only miss a couple of games there, but there's still concern that we may have lost our hitter if he doesn't recover. And he's only batting a 263 and his OPS plus is 101, which is literally one point higher than league average. And that's our best. Yeah, it's a hard stat to acknowledge if you're an M's fan, but it's why the M's really need to get better hitting. If Julio does go down for the rest of the season, I mean, God forbid if something were to happen there, Lamont Wade Jr. will most likely take first base and Dylan Moore will take center or left. I mean, pick one because Rayleigh and Moore are both good with their speed in the outfield. So that's what we really need is coverage and good reaction times. But then we're stuck with asking this question. What about Polanco at second base? What about Garver at DH? And what about Rojas? Because they're there's a lot of guys in, that were in the talks for trades with the Mariners, but they are basically going to replace Rojas, and Rojas is doing decent. Starting off, Polanco. He isn't going anywhere from what I can see unless the team is willing to eat his contract in a trade and get like Isak Paredes, which would be awesome, or Andy Ibanez has been thrown out there, who I, I is hot right now, but I feel it's a bigger risk because there isn't much consistency to go off of, and I've never seen him play in T-Mobile Park, so home games, it's kind of a big mystery of whether or not he can hit here in the marine layer or not. I would expect two to three years of solid hitting would make me feel a little bit more comfortable with him, but I, I don't see it right now. That's just me though. So don't, don't, you don't have to follow me. That's just my opinion. Now this is highly unlikely just because Polanco's performance is still, <laughs> Ugh. And his contract is a high end of the budget. Plus the bitter truth is that we gave up more than we should in hindsight. So dropping him would just be as bad. Garver on their hand, maybe batting like doo-doo, but it, if he hits, it's like Brett Boone and towards the end of his career and like Richie Sexton, where it's either a nuke Or it's a K. Ball's now here to Mitch Garver. And then back to the one or the other. Nothing else. We signed him for two years and maybe his less than one out of five at bats with a hit will come in every single clutch moment the rest of the season, or he will continue to fail when we need him the most. I sound negative, but I can't lie and tell you we'll be fine. But I think he is more of a relief guy for Cal. You know, we don't burn out Cal or gold glove caliber starting dumper, who is uh, honestly also batting 209, but he has 20 home runs when they matter most and his defensive ability is superb if not the best when it comes behind the plate he still holds a 2.4 war this season now we'll get on the rojas he isn't going anywhere either if he does i would be mind blown and depoto better make up forward in the long run he has the most consistent bat on the team he has a 244 average and he holds a 1.7 war he has been excellent at third base for us the last couple months and i believe rightfully deserves a spot either permanently at third base unless we picked up 
up like Isak Paredes or someone at a higher caliber, he has utility. And I think he'll do great at second base as well. Okay, let's wrap this up. With Tay on that bye bye, there's a possibility that either the Mariners front office is giving up since Depoto said there is, quote, we are open to doing something that has the potential to be dynamic. Don't know if that's going to be available. Right now, it's not. And this is as late as we've ever gone in the deadline where I can honestly say it's not. Whatever that means, the only other club with prospect depth like ours is the Orioles. So are we so broke that we can't even offer a deal to the White Sox, Tigers, Giants, and Rays that they would take because we don't have the money to support the players coming on? If so, f you, Stanton. Or the Mariners are gearing up for a trade with San Francisco or maybe a trade with Detroit or Tampa Bay. If they do make a move, I feel like they're going to get at least two bats because adding one will be a waste of prospects. Now, let me be clear on why. Rentals don't work in Seattle. Seattle is the only team that's never appeared in a World Series and the stadium batting average for visiting teams is 209. Now maybe that's our pitching but you can't convince players to come to Seattle because they want a ring or money. There's no evidence or history of championships in Seattle. Also we don't have Yankees, Mets, or Dodger money to buy out these concerns. So trades must happen but I know DePoto isn't going to waste top prospects unless it gives a serious fighting chance for division lead because once you lose that rental, re-signing them with the same narrative that lives in the present isn't going to bring them back, nor is it going to bring an equal caliber player in the offseason. Mariners are either all in this trade deadline or all out. Like this video if you made it this far. I'll wait. Comment below with your thoughts and we'll have a civilized conversation. Also, comment RIP Brandon if you've heard the fearless leader dropped out. And ironically, I'm more sad that Ty France is gone. I will see you beautiful people in the next one. Later.